Alright folks, coming to you pretty late right now, but I figured it is time to publicize more widely some of the work I've been doing since June concerning the momentum movement. Now, I know a lot of you might have uh, already heard, especially if you're followers of the Hard Bastard channel, of a story that I did a while ago concerning the Sunrise Movement. Uh, and how they essentially rigged the town hall in order to uh, just load it with all these activists who, in some cases, were labeled correctly. They were labeled as members of the Sunrise Movement or 350.org or the Audubon Society. But in many cases, they were Sunrise activists who were identified as, uh, you know, a graduate student, identified as progressive activists things like that. And my interest in the Sunrise Movement is not only because of the issue of climate change, which of course I think we should we should definitely discuss and debate it instead of just discussing and, and uh, implicitly trusting that these politicians have already found the truth and the cure and everything. It's also a bigger issue. The Sunrise Movement and Extinction Rebellion are both in one way or another connected to a larger network of movements called the Momentum Community and the Ainey Institute. So what, what that really means is that they follow an organizing method that is largely uh, geared towards what they would like to call decentralized uh, grassroots planning, but it's not really grassroots. And this is only part one. I've, I actually wrote five parts of this story back in June and July and have at various points been publishing through other, uh, through other venues, including the Federalist, including Canadian Institute for Jewish uh, Research, through Canuck Law. I've been publishing smaller and more focused pieces on two of the movements, which are Sunrise and If Not Now. There is also another movement called Cosecha, which is more geared towards illegal immigrants and getting them all amnestied. And they're not, I would say, as successful as the other two. So this is called America's Brave New AstroTurfers, Part 1, The Children, and it is available on my mind's account. So if you go to Chef Leopard and then you, and I will put the article link to, you can view this and you can read it and get a little flavor for this phenomenon. Now, I know some people might be saying, what do I care? There are a lot of left-wing progressive uh, activist groups right now and they're all doing very well or, or, or it would seem to be so. And in many cases, they seem to be running buck wild in the case of Antifa. So I am writing something that's a little more focused on, on the importance of it with regards to what's going on now with impeachment and the ICE protests and the climate change. And it could well be, you know, not to, not to deflate my own story. It could, it could be that, this, sure, nothing will happen and that this is just more water, water under the bridge. And, and uh, in, in my own uh, opinion. I, I would hope it would it would be so. I don't I don't believe in any of the of the ideals that these movements be, believe in. But I did read the philosophy of the movement uh, as written by two of its formulators, Mark and Paul Engler. Uh, it's called This Is an Uprising, and it is an interesting book. Uh, you know, even if you don't take the ideological slant that they do. And essentially, what they're trying to do is something that is, it's very interesting. And, and first, first suspend your own uh, ideological prejudice here. Because when I mention the name I'm about to mention, most people, they get either their, blo their blood is boiling or they think that, you know, it doesn't mean anything. So a lot of people know about the Acorn Institute. And Saul Alinsky, he had, he had this uh, 
organization called Industrial Areas Foundation. And during the Obama administration, Glenn Beck especially, but also I, I believe it was Alex Jones as well, they used to get all in a huff about uh, Alinskyite tactics and how Alinsky is, is uh, you know, his methods are being used in order to indoctrinate in America. And, and that's all well and good, but uh, it's still just a method. Okay, Alinsky, Alinsky organizing means that you go to communities, you build an institution. That's the most important part. And you turn that institution into a vehicle to achieve political power. This organization, Momentum, and its parent organization, INI, they do use some Alinskyi tactics, some. But they also mix it with what they call Momentum organizing or Momentum uh, movements, I guess, which have to do with a philosophy by Francis Fox Piven. And you can actually read a little bit more about it. And this is an uprising. And in her case, the importance isn't so much in building an organization and an institution as much as it is, is using uh, inflection points in society when there is high stress and trying to get it to create this mass movement that carries away the establishment. That's what Francis Fox Piven would preach. So what they're trying to do is combine them, and they call it the hybrid theory, that you do create in some sense, an organization, but it's not about creating the institution. Uh, although, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly where the border goes to. There, there's a part two where you can really get into the gritty of it. They, they have these lectures called Swarm Sessions, and that will be coming up, probably going to pu publish it maybe Sunday or, or next week, but it's already written. So you, you will probably see it in the next week, just haven't decided when. In any case, these organizations, these, these groups, these, what they want to call mass movements, are in reality, they are an illusion. So they, they are, in many cases, groups of people. Uh, you can see here in the graphic, there's the Sunrise Movement, so the Cosecha Movement, and if not now, all three of them have very uh, conspicuously overlapping me memberships. So... They, they all claim to be, oh, we're just a family of movements. Well, it's, it's really, if you think about it, it's one movement. They just have different uh, skins on at different times. You know how, how sometimes you'll be playing a game. Let's say in, in uh, Mortal Kombat, there were different ways that you could, you could dress your character. Uh, I'm, you know, maybe I'm exaggerating. But these movements, at different points, you have the same activists preaching for climate change, in the case of Sunrise, but the same activists will preach for open borders and amnesty with Cosecha, and they'll pre preach against the occupation of the West Bank when they're working for If Not Now. And there is a lot of talk about what, what does it really mean to be a grassroots organizer? And I would contend that if you read through this article, okay, I can't go through the whole thing because it is pretty wordy, and we would probably get down into the weeds. These organizations are not grassroots at all. In many cases, they are offshoots of previous movements that simply did the same thing, but with a different methodology. They, they, they went about it a different way. They weren't using the hybrid method. They were using more the Alinskyite method of building an organization, or they would try to use... Uh, the Francis pa Fox Piven method, which would be neglecting an organization and just having a movement. So the Cosecha movement, just to go through all three of them, the Cosecha movement is really a successor to the Dream Act movement, the people who were act asking for this mass amnesty and were trying to get Congress to pass some sort of legislation in order to uh, get all these illegal aliens into the country. And they work as diligently as they can to shame people from, uh, I guess, treating illegal immigrants as, as they should be treated, as people who should not be here. They should, they should be back in their own countries until they can apply for citizenship and go through the process that, that most of, of American citizens are supposed to go through. 
uh, you know, American immigrants. You know, my, my parents came here through, uh, you know, a legal system, right? They don't believe in that. So they are merely applying the momentum organizing method to that cause as opposed to just doing institutionalism. Uh, you know, if, if you want to think about institutions, for instance, you, you would have uh, in, in the case of, of um, you know, whereas Black Lives Matter is a little bit more of a street based movement, you have the NAACP is an institution. It's not really something that, that you see out on the streets and, and uh, getting in, in like real you know, spontaneous eruptions of, of, uh, of, of activism. That's what they want to create. They want to create so-called spontaneous eruptions of activism, which, which they aren't. They're not really spontaneous. If not now, is the same idea. It, uh, there was, just like with Cosecha, there was earlier the dream movement for, if not now, there was the J Street movement. J Street is a very far left um Pro, I would say that they're they're mostly a Jewish organization, but they're you know a lot of the people within it are not Jewish at all. Not that I guess that's the point. But you see a lot of these people; they're they're very uh, influential. They they have deep connections within the Jewish left wing press, among them the Forward, and they have been uh, trying to promote themselves. Uh, one of the one of their fanboy journalists, Peter Beinart, tried to do that. And they, they the, being the groveling leftists that they are, they said, well, we're not worthy of being called the Jewish Black Lives Matter. It's a very humorous situation. And uh, Beinart ended up writing an article where in, in one of these retarded self-criticism sessions, he um, he basically confessed and said, well, you, you know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said it. I guess, you know, we're not worthy of even being called called that. You know, Beinart basically had to step on step in his own dick in order to not be laughed out of this so-called movement. But yeah, if not now, most of their most of their activism is towards uh, of course things that are going on in the Middle East, specifically with Israel and the Palestinians. They've been trying to get a lot of people to uh I guess divest from Israel also getting trying to get people to not go on the birthright trip. That's a trip that any American or, or I, I think I, I think it might be in Canada and England too. So so in any case, any any Jewish teen can take a ten day trip to Israel and I guess see the country. So if not now is trying to get people not to go on the trip and they have a whole whole campaign about that. So you can read about this. And Sunrise, I've already told you a lot about that. Sunrise is, is, I would say, they're the successor movement and they're the momentum counterpart to 350.org. 350.org is a group that is uh, entirely dominated by some people like like uh, Bill McKibben, who is an environmental activist. And uh, I think he has yeah, his book still here, uh, The End of Nature. And Bill McKibben's organization is largely directed towards trying to get uh, carbon emissions reduced such that the amount of carbon dioxide in the air will be 350 parts per million. Now, irrespective of the goal, um, 350.org has the same idea and philosophy as the Sunrise Movement, but the, the organization is done differently. The Sunrise Movement largely takes place through youth hubs. So you go to, for instance, I can even pull it up. I'm technically doing an infomercial for them, uh, <laughs> but you can find a local hub. They have an interactive map here, and uh, yeah, they have, they have a ton. They have uh, several, you know, not a ton in Alabama, which is obviously this time of year the most important state, being as it is college football season <laughs> but uh you have here in north carolina there's plenty of them uh thankfully there's only a couple in ohio <laughs> but more of these um fanatics could pop up and essentially what they do they'll, they'll go around and they'll try to make fossil fuels usage and other climate change topics be uh you know the premier the premier uh topic of conversation 
Uh, just like I, I guess some of you have probably seen already, there was the video of uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and the um, you know the baby eating. Of the climate crisis, we only have a few months left. I love that you support the Green Deal, but it's not getting, you know, getting rid of fossil fuel is not going to solve the problem fast enough. A Swedish professor saying, you know, we can eat de dead people, but that's not fast enough. So I think your next uh, campaign slogan has to be this. We got to start eating babies. We don't have enough time. There's too much CO2. All of you, you're, you, you know, you're a pollutant. Too much CO2. We have to start now, please. You are so great. I'm so happy that you're really supporting the Green Deal, but it's not enough. You know, even if we would bomb Russia, we still have too many people, too much pollution. So we have to get rid of the babies. That's a big problem. Just stopping having babies is not enough. We need to eat the babies. And this is very serious. Please give a response. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. We'll go ahead. Um, okay. No, we'll, we'll go ahead. It's so, no, no, no. Yeah, no. Thank you. So I think, um, yeah, no. So one of the things that's very important to us is that we need to treat the climate crisis with the urgency that it does present. Um, luckily, we have more than a few months. We do need to hit net zero in several years. Um, but I think we all need to, to, to understand that there are a lot of solutions that we have um, and that we can pursue and that if we act in a positive way, there is space for hope. There's, we are never beyond hope. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so so I, th I think that was uh, an amazing, amazing troll. And uh, to be honest with you, if it's not a troll, it's still amazing one of the greatest moments in recent history. And uh, to get back to the topic, a lot of that is, I guess, based on the hysteria of this, um, this movement, the Sunrise Movement. And the climate change movement, you might, you might notice that I did have a little bit more of a focus in the past couple of months, if, if you were reading my, my stuff or if you were watching some of my videos. The fact of the matter is that climate change is a movement that you can use in order to brainwash more people than a lot of the other topics, right? Because most young people, I think, don't necessarily care about illegal immigration. Even less young people than that care about the West Bank and, and you know Israel and Palestine and, and the Gaza Strip. There are, there are people, obviously... But climate change is something that is basically being poured into these people's minds every single day. It's, it's, being a, it's a topic of indoctrination on the left, uh, you, you know, regardless of, of whether you're one of these corporate shill left wingers or you're one of these complete whack job Marxists, almost across the left, there is this obsession with climate change. Uh, there is there is a small faction of the left that is that is looking at it askance and they're saying, look, you know, what, what we're really talking about is is basically bilking the American worker or bilking the worker on the on the world stage out of their livelihood in order to satisfy basic hysteria. You know, people like Brendan O'Neill say that and there, there's a few other leftists that say that. In fact, I've sp spoken to quite a few. The fact is this. So this type of organizing, the momentum community organizing, it is entirely, entirely geared toward embracing emotional politics as opposed to rational politics. And it goes like that when it comes to comparing these ICE detention centers to concentration camps, which is an entirely emotional, factless uh, exercise. It, it goes like that when you're talking about what they do when they go to these these uh, airports and they tell these people, well, well, what you're doing is you're essentially supporting the occupation. You're supporting brutality by taking a 10 day trip to Israel. And philosophically, you can make the, the case, but it's it's a philosophical. Ex it's 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 basically bullshit. 
you know, pe people are not necessarily going in order to be uh, m making a political statement. In some cases, they're just going in order to, you know, have be able to drink when you're only 18. Uh, now, these people want to shame you. It's all about the shame. It's the shame over illegal immigrants. It's the shame over the occupation. It's the shame over using your hair dryer a little too long and burning a little f more carbon every morning. That's the philosophy. So please take a few moments. I think it'll probably take 10 minutes to read this article. I promise that there is more. I would hope that you'd find the rest of it very interesting. And if you don't, you know, obviously you can comment. Uh, you have my information at the bottom here. And I'll talk to you later. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also subscribe to me on Bitchu and Minds, as well as on Subscribe Star if you want to donate. All those are at Chef Leopard and on Gab at Starscream85.